Okay, so yeah, One UI 7 on the Galaxy S10, S20 and Note 20 series is real. Like I actually have it running right now and it works way better than I expected. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. This has to be some complicated hacky install thing. But nah, it's way easier than it sounds. It's basically a port from the Galaxy S25 Ultra. So yeah, your old S10, S20 or Note 20, you can pretty much turn it into a software clone of the S25 Ultra. And I'm not even kidding. It feels like a brand new phone. All those newer features you probably assumed were locked behind newer hardware, they are here and they are working. What surprised me most is how smooth it all feels. Like I expected bugs or lag or stuff breaking in weird ways, but no, it's actually really solid. In a few places, it even feels better than the last official update I was running. I wasn't expecting that. Now look, this isn't for everyone. If you're not into custom ROMs or tweaking your phone, you'll probably want to sit this one out or at least do some homework before jumping in. You should definitely know what it is, how it works, if it's even worth it for you, and yeah, the pros and the cons. Since my last video, I've been daily driving it just to see how it holds up over time. And I'm finally ready to talk about the long-term experience. I'll also walk you through how to install it yourself on the S10e, S10, S10 Plus, S10 5G, S20, S20 Plus, S20 Ultra, Note 20, and Note 20 Ultra. The install process is pretty much the same across the board, but I'll still break it down later in the video for anyone who is new to this stuff. If you're only here for the install guide, feel free to skip ahead. But right now, I'm just gonna talk through what it's been like actually using this ROM. So yeah, the second I booted it up, it was like, wait, what? Everything looked so different. The animations, the UI, the layout, it just felt like a way more modern phone. The Galaxy AI stuff is baked in too. Yeah, the same AI features Samsung claimed were exclusive to the newer devices. They are in here and they actually work. You have got the new UI touches, updated setting menus, it's got that whole One UI 7 vibe going on. Like I wasn't expecting it to feel this put together. And what's wild is, I haven't run into anything major yet. The only limitation I have noticed is the hardware itself. Like it shows an option to switch between standard and smooth refresh rates, but yeah, the screen itself is capped at 60Hz, obviously. It's not magically gonna become a high refresh rate display. But even then, the animations feel smoother than before. Props to Extreme XT and the whole dev crew behind this amazing port. And all of that just proves something pretty obvious. These phones, from a hardware perspective, they are totally capable of running Samsung's newest software. Like imagine if Samsung actually released an optimized version of this for them. Even just the basic stuff. It would run even better, no doubt. I've been testing a bunch of stuff, running apps, trying heavy tasks, just to see if it starts lagging or heating up. So far, everything's been good. Even after playing for a while, no serious heating. And the battery didn't tank either. It all just held up. The Galaxy AI features are here too. Note Assist works great. Summarizing, translating, reformatting notes, it just does its thing. Photo Assist in the gallery, you can remove stuff, replace parts of the image with AI, and Audio Eraser works too. Tried it on a video, it cleaned up the background noise like magic. Voice Recorder now does transcriptions as well, and that's been surprisingly reliable. Then there's that now brief feature from the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Also got Call Assist, Writing Assist, Interpreter, Health Assist, they are all here. And yep, they are working. You should try them out, mess around a bit, see what you like. Now the camera. Okay, mostly fine, but not perfect. Portrait mode works partially. It doesn't work in the rear camera, but does work on the front camera. When you switch lenses, there's this weird green flash. It's quick, but it's there. Also, if you take a photo at 0.5x, it kinda bugs out. You won't be able to switch back to other lenses unless you close and reopen the camera app. That said, for regular shots and video, works totally fine. And here's one more good thing. It works perfectly inside Instagram and Snapchat. Connectivity wise, everything's working. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile data, zero issues. DAX works too. WhatsApp, no problem. The banking apps I have tried works too, but I can confirm all of them. Face unlock doesn't work, but fingerprint works just like before. Battery life has been solid too. No weird drain, no overheating, 
And here, Bixby is gone. It's replaced with Gemini now. And for me, that's a win. Now, customization. This is where it really shines. The whole One UI 7 look, the fresh icons, the clean layout, it makes the S10 looks more beautiful. That display still slaps and this UI just makes it pop even more. You'll probably notice some bits that feel similar to other systems like the new quick panel layout. But who cares? It looks good, it works and it runs on your phone. That's what matters. Customization options go deep. Color palettes, themed icons, all that stuff is still there. But now there's more. Custom lock screen layouts, new widget styles, more options for resizing and repositioning. The new widgets for lock screen and home. They are not just pretty, they are actually usable. And yes, good lock works. You can grab modules like Key Cafe and change your keyboard style. Even if it ends up looking like something out of a cyberpunk theme. It's fun to mess with. Theme Park, Wonderland, Lockstar, they all work. I didn't run into any bugs while using them. There's even a lab section in the settings. You can force full screen apps in split view. So yeah, everything's been running fine for me so far. Important heads up though, before installing anything, check the list of known issues. They're all posted on the Extreme XT GitHub repository. Definitely worth a look in case there's something I haven't bumped into yet. Also, this port only works on the Exynos variants of the Galaxy S10, S20 and Note 20 series. If you have got the Snapdragon model, sorry, this won't work. And obviously, only do this if you know what you're doing. Also, Nox will be tripped. I assume most of you watching are doing this on a spare or backup phone anyway. But if this is your main phone, just think twice before jumping in. If you're still in, cool. Links to everything you need are down in the description. You'll land on this side, scroll through, you'll see all the supported models listed. First thing, copy the password they gave you. Then match your phone model with the identifier code next to it. Then click on your phone model to get into the folder. Just a quick note, only the S10 series needs the repartitional files. S20 and Note 20 series don't need that part. So make sure you download the right stuff for your exact phone. Save it all to a folder on your computer to keep it clean and simple. I'm doing this on an S10, so I'll be showing that version of the install. Again, the process is mostly the same for all the supported models. But for some S20 series phones, there are a couple of important differences I'll call out when we get there. Alright, here we go. From this point on, just follow me step by step. Do exactly what I do. First step, we need to unlock the bootloader. Check for any software updates first. If there's one available, go ahead and install it. If not, that's fine. You are probably already on the latest available official version. Now, if you are already running a custom ROM, just skip ahead. Then flash the repartitioner and cleaner files and then the ROM itself using twerp. But if you are on stock, let's go. Go into settings, about phone, software information and tap the build number 7 times. That will unlock the developer options. Go back to the main settings, scroll down and look for OEM unlocking. Enable it. Done? Cool. Shut the phone down. Now we need to boot into download mode. Grab your USB cable and a laptop. Plug the USB cable into your laptop, but don't connect it to your phone yet. Take your phone, hold the Bixby key plus volume down and then plug the USB cable. You will see the download screen. If your bootloader is already unlocked, just press volume up once. If not, long press volume up to unlock it. This will wipe everything on your phone and then it will reboot. Once it boots up again, connect to Wi-Fi, go back to settings, repeat the steps, enable developer options and turn OEM unlocking back on. Now shut the device again. We needed to do this because your phone might have been in a pre-normal state and we just avoided it by doing this. So now again, download mode. Volume down plus Bixby plus connect USB cable. You'll get that screen again. This time, press volume up once. Now switch to your laptop. Open Odin. First, click Options and uncheck Auto Reboot. Look for the blue highlight in Odin. That means your phone is connected. After that, click AP. Find and select the drop file you downloaded. Hit Start. In a few seconds, you will see a pass message. That's your green light. 
Now we need to boot into Twerp Recovery. Keep holding all buttons on your phone. As soon as the phone screen turns off, release the volume down button. Once you see the Samsung logo, release the power and Bixby keys. But keep holding volume up. You can let go after a few seconds or once you feel a slight vibration. Great! You are in recovery now. If you suddenly see a bunch of code and the phone reboots, don't panic. It's normal. Let it do its thing. It will come right back into recovery. Now go to wipe, format data and type yes and reboot back to recovery. And with that, your phone storage will be visible. Now, if you have got a Galaxy Note 20 or S20 series phone, listen up. Your life's easier. All you need to do is copy the ROM file onto your phone, then go to Twerp, install, find the file and swipe to flash. That's it. You don't have to follow the next couple of steps. Alright. Now, since I am on the S10, I've got to do one extra thing. Copy the repartitioner file from your laptop to your phone. Once that's done, in Twerp, go to install, find the repartitioner file and flash it. Once done, your phone will reboot automatically back into recovery. You will need to format data again to fix the encryption issue. Same as before, wipe, format data, type yes and reboot to recovery. Now copy over the cleaner file and the ROM. It might take a few minutes, just wait. Once they are on the phone, flash the cleaner file first. It's quick, the phone will automatically reboot again. Once you are back in recovery after repartitioning, go to install, find the ROM file just like before and flash it. This part usually takes like 5 to 10 minutes, so just hang tight, don't freak out if it sits on one screen for a bit. When it's done, wipe cache and Dalvik. Then reboot the system. And just like that, you have just installed the ROM. Whether you are on S10, S20 or Note 20 series phone, that's the core process. Now important note, especially for some of you with S20 devices, on certain S20 models, you might run into a boot loop. You will need to use ADB side load instead. So first, grab the platform tools from Google's official site. Set that up on your Windows PC. There are plenty of quick YouTube guides if you have never done it before. Then move the ROM file into that folder. Rename it to something short, like rom.zip, just to keep it simple. Now go back to your phone, boot into twerp, go to advanced, adb side load and get back to your PC. Open command prompt inside the platforms tools folder. Type adb devices. Then type adb side load rom.zip or whatever name you gave the rom file. Once you hit enter, the rom will start flashing right away. That's your workaround if the regular flash fails on S20. And just like that, you are through the hard part. In a few minutes, you will see the One UI 7 home screen. Go through the step, skip what you don't need. After that, check the model. It'll show you you're using the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Sign in with your Gmail account and start checking out the new features. One thing to note though, when you go to the Play Store, it will probably say device not verified. That's normal on custom ROMs. To fix it, download Play Integrity Fix and Zygisk from the links in the description. You'll flash them using the kernel SU next app. Once you have got the files, move them to your phone. Open kernel SU next, go to modules, install and select both files one by one. After that, after that, go to settings, apps and clear storage data for Google Play Store and Google Play services. Then just reboot the phone. Once it's back on, go back to Play Store, check the status and now it will say device is verified. That's pretty much it. If you decide to install this and test it out, please share your experience in the comments.